Hello, we're at the University of New South Wales and I'm Norman Wildover. This is problem 54 from chapter 3 of the Linear Algebra First Year Notes on complex numbers. We're asked to express sine to the fifth of theta and cosine to the fourth of theta in terms of sines or cosines of multiples of theta and hence find their integrals. All right, so this uh, problem involves very importantly, these fundamental relations between the circular functions cos theta and sine theta and the complex exponential e to the i theta. So I remind you that e to the i theta is a convenient short form for cosine theta plus i sine theta and represents a number, a complex number, on the unit circle. Now we can express cosine theta in terms of e to the i theta and e to the minus i theta. It's just the average of those two. And so the reason for that is if you uh, take this formula, you also take the formula involving e to the minus i theta, and you add them together, then you see you get this one. And if you take the difference between those two formulas, you get the formula for sine theta in terms of the exponential, e to the i theta minus e to the minus i theta over 2i. And these are very useful, important formulas for example, in engineering, because they allow us to replace problems involving cosines and sines with problems involving the exponential function, which are sometimes easier because the exponential function has certain advantages. In particular, for example, its, its own derivative, that kind of thing. All right, so I'm going to use that. So let's, uh, let's get going. Sine to the fifth of theta. So we compute. that sine to the fifth of theta equals, well, it's just the fifth power of sine theta. So we're going to get e to the i theta minus e to the minus i theta over 2i. We have to raise that to the fifth power. And so, uh, well, we have to remind ourselves about the binomial theorem. So here's Pascal's triangle, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1, and the row that we're interested in, 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. So this row here is the row that we need to expand uh, something like this. All right, so when we expand this thing out, we're going to get 1 over, well, there's going to be a 2i to the fifth down here, and then when we expand this out, we're going to get e to the i theta to the fifth power, which is e to the i phi theta, and then plus 5, the binomial coefficient, times this thing to the fourth power, which is e to the i 4 theta, times this thing to the first power. So it'll be a minus e to the minus i theta there. The actual term is minus e to the minus i theta. And then the next one will be plus 10, this one cubed, e to the i3 theta, uh, times this one squared, then there'll be a plus sign, and e to the minus i2 theta. And if we square that, we get the minus times minus is plus, and uh, we get minus i2 theta as the exponent. And then carrying on, the next one, uh, this one here now is raised to the second power, e to the i2 theta. This one to the third power, giving us minus e to the minus i3 theta. And then another 5. Uh, this one, e to the i theta, times this one to the fourth power, e to the minus i4 theta. And finally, a minus sign with e to the minus i five theta. Okay, so now we can simplify a little bit. Well, one over two to the fifth is uh, one over 32, and i to the fifth is the same as i, so we'll just replace that uh, like this. And then what do we have inside here? Well, we have various powers of uh, the exponential. We have e to the i uh, five theta, and I'm going to match that up with minus e to the minus i phi theta coming from the last term. And then I'm going to take the two 
parts involving uh, five. So here we have e to the i four theta uh, with a minus sign and a minus i theta. So altogether, we'll have a minus e to the i three theta. And over here, there will be a plus e to the i minus i three theta. So I've combined this term and this term. This one has a minus sign. This one doesn't have a minus sign. And then there will be some terms involving the coefficient 10. So this one here will be uh, e to the i theta. And this one here will be uh, minus e to the minus i theta. Those are all the terms. Okay, now we're going to basically identify uh, some more uh, terms, essentially the form sine theta. So if we take out one of the uh, twos and the i, we can write this as 1 over 16 times. Well, if we take this thing and we subtract that and we divide by 2i, we're getting exactly sine of 5 theta. And, uh, and here we're getting minus 5 e to the i 3 theta minus e to the minus i 3 theta divided by 2i, according to the same expression, is sine 3 theta. And finally, uh, plus 10 uh, e to the i theta minus e to the minus i theta divided by 2i will be another sine theta. And there's the end of the bracket. And so we have expressed sine to the fifth theta as a combination of terms involving sine five theta, sine three theta, and sine theta. All right, so we've established that sine to the fifth theta is this expression involving sine thetas. And now if we want the integral of sine to the fifth theta, we can just use this expression for which these integrals are much easier to compute. So the integral of sine to the fifth theta d theta is then going to be 1 16th times the integral of sine 5 theta minus 5 sine 3 theta plus 10 sine theta d theta. And we can write that because the integral of sine to the fifth theta, it's basically a minus cosine five theta, minus cosine five theta divided by five. The integral of sine three theta minus cos three theta, so they'll all together be five cos three theta over three. And the integral of 10 sine theta will be minus 10 uh, cos theta, all of that. And of course, we can always add a constant of integration. So that's a very useful kind of thing to be able to do, to be able to convert this kind of expression into cosines and sines of multiples in order that the integration uh, proceed much uh, simpler. All right, so now let's try the same thing with the cosine to the fourth theta, which is a little bit easier, in fact, because the cosine expression doesn't have this little bothersome i in the denominator there, so it's a little bit easier. So similarly, cosine to the fourth theta will be e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta all over two, that's the expression for cosine theta, all to the fourth power. All right, so when we expand that out, we're going to get 1 over 2 to the fourth. And then using the binomial theorem for n equals 4, for which the coefficients are 1, 4, 6, 4, 1, we get this thing to the fourth power, which is e to the i 4 theta, plus 4 times 
this thing to the third power, which is e to the i3 theta, times just one of these, e to the minus i theta. Then plus 6, this thing to the second power, e to the i2 theta, times this thing to the second power, e to the minus i2 theta. The next term will be plus 4, a single one of these, times this thing to the third power, e to the minus i3 theta. And finally, just e to the minus i theta to the fourth, e to the minus i4 theta. All right, so let's group these things together in a convenient way. So we're going to take uh, one of these twos out here, and the other ones we're going to combine in this way. e to the i4 theta plus e to the minus i4 theta over 2. All right, combining this one and this one with one of the twos. And then we have plus 4. Uh, here is an e to the i2 theta. And here is a plus e to the minus i2 theta. And all over 2. I should put that in brackets. And uh, then finally, we have this term here, which is 6 e to the i2 theta times e to the minus i2 theta. That's 6 e to the 0, just 6. So we have plus 6. Well, we still have to divide by the same 2 that we took out everywhere else. And then finally, we get 1 over 8 times e to the i4 theta plus e to the minus i4 theta. Again, we recognize this expression over 2 gives us a cosine of 4 theta. Here we're getting a cosine of 2 theta, so plus 4 cosine of 2 theta, and plus 3. So there we've expressed cosine to the fourth of theta in terms of cosines of multiples of theta. And so finally, if we want to integrate cosine to the fourth theta, we can use this expression that we just calculated so that the integral of cosine to the fourth theta d theta, well, it's going to be one eighth times the integral of cosine four theta plus four cos two theta plus three d theta. And that is one eighth. The integral of cosine four theta is sine four theta over 4, and the integral of uh, cos 2 theta is sine 2 theta over 2, so we get 2 sine 2 theta. The integral of 3 is just 3 theta. Bracket, and because we've been integrating here in an indefinite way, we should add a constant of integration. So it's a practical application of this use of complex numbers to express a power of cosine or sine in terms of a combination of cosines or sines of multiples of theta.